That's very kind. Thank you very much. I'm not trying in this lecture to teach facts, and I'm certainly not trying to indoctrinate. I'm trying to raise consciousness. And we've all met the phrase consciousness raising in the context of feminism. It's especially powerful. There's no law against using a phrase like the rights of man or one man, one vote. Yet because we've all had our consciousness raised by feminists, most of us feel kind of uneasy when we hear people use a phrase like one man, one vote. And even those who still use man in that sort of sentence do so with their consciousness raised. They know what they're doing. They're taking a stand for traditional language, perhaps, or trying deliberately to rile feminists. But everybody, on one side or the other, has had their feminist consciousness raised. And I want to raise our consciousness about some unconscious assumptions we all make about religion. Let me try a little experiment on you. At Christmas time one year, my newspaper in Britain, The Independent, was looking for a seasonal picture. And they found a heartwarmingly ecumenical one at a school nativity play. The three wise men were played by Shadbreet, a Sikh, Musharraf, a Muslim, and Adele, a Christian, all aged four. Now, my guess is that you probably think that picture's rather sweet. How nice that four-year-olds who belong to different religions should come together in a nativity play. <laughs> now, suppose the caption said this, Shadbreet, a socialist, <laughs> Musharraf, a conservative, and Adel, a liberal, all aged four. <laughs> Shadbreet, an atheist, Musharraf, an agnostic, and Adele, a secular humanist, all aged four. I'm trying to raise consciousness. I hope that that series of three slides has raised your consciousness. I hope that every time from now on you hear anybody talking about, say, a Catholic child or a Protestant child or a Muslim child, you will protest. You will say, you wouldn't talk about a postmodernist child <laughs> or a Keynesian child or a Hayekian monetarist child. <laughs> there is no such thing as a Catholic child. There's only a child of Catholic parents. There's no such thing as a Protestant child, only a child of Protestant parents. There's no such thing as a Muslim child, only a child of Muslim parents. I repeat these slogans over and over again, probably too often. Too often? It can't be too often when you're in the business of consciousness raising. Please join me in protesting every time you hear anyone ever referring to a Catholic child, a Christian child, a Muslim child, etc. I like to think that this particular piece of consciousness raising has had some, uh, some effect. I'm now going to play you a short three minute extract from a British comedian called Marcus Brigstock, um, and the, it's, it's quite funny. I hope you don't mind if I, I hope you don't take offense too. Um, uh, um, at, at the end of this, of this monologue, it, somebody's put, so, put sort of pictures onto it as well. I think it must originally have been on, on radio. Uh, at the end, I hope you'll get the, the same consciousness raising point that I've just made. So I'll start the, I hope the sound will come through. I'd like to start this week with a request, and this one goes out to the followers of the three Abrahamic religions, to the Muslims, Christians, and Jews. It's just a little thing, really, but do you think that when you've finished smashing up the world and blowing each other to bits and demanding special privileges while you do it, do you think that maybe the rest of us could sort of have our planet back? <laughs> um, I wouldn't ask, but the thing is, I'm starting to think there must be something written in the special books each of you so enjoy referring to that tells you it's all right to behave like precious, petulant, pugnacious pricks. <laughs> the 
forgive the alliteration, but your persistent power mad punch ups are pissing me off. <laughs> It's mainly the extremists, obviously, but not exclusively. It's a lot of mainstreamers as well. Let me give you an example of what I'm talking about, OK? Muslims, listen up, my bearded and veily friends. Calm down, OK? <laughs> Stop blowing stuff up. Not everything that's said about you is an attack on the Prophet Muhammad and Allah that needs to end in the infidel being destroyed. Have a cup of tea, put on a Cat Stevens record, sit down and chill out. <laughs> I mean, seriously, what's wrong with a strongly worded letter to the Times? <laughs> Christians, you and your churches don't get to be millionaires while other people have nothing at all. They're your bloody rules. Either stick to them or abandon the faith. And stop persecuting and killing people you judge to be immoral. Oh, and stop pretending you're celibate as a cover-up for being a gay or a nonce. <laughs> Right, that's two ticked off. Jews! I know you're God's chosen people and the rest of us are just whatever, but when Israel behaves like a violent, psychopathic bully and someone mentions it, that doesn't make them anti-Semitic. And for the record, your troubled history is not a license to act with impunity now. So, when the letters come, and I'm guessing they will, <laughs> I can guarantee that each one of those faiths will be utterly convinced that I've singled them out for special criticism. Why did it have to be us? Islam is a peaceful faith. I don't see what's wrong with being Christian. We're a peaceful, loving faith. How dare you after all we've been through? We Jews know how terrible violence can be. You see, all of them will be convinced that they're the ones being picked on. The Abrahamic faiths are like scousers. They're always convinced they're it's harder than everyone else. <laughs> Right? And why is it that all of these faiths claim to be peaceful when even the most fleeting glance at a history of warfare will tell you otherwise? The relationship between religion and warfare is very similar to the relationship between ant and deck. You could have one without the other, but I'm not sure anyone would see the point. <laughs> like it, but it would at least be refreshing to hear one of them come out and say, Oh, our faith's violent as you like. We'll have a scrap, us lot. We do. Honestly, our special book says fight, fight, kill, maim, fight, smash, destroy, fight, murder, kill, and fight. That's why I sign up, to be honest. I'm a bit naughty, you know what I mean? <laughs> but no, all of them claim to be peaceful religions. Yeah, peaceful right up to the point where someone takes something they think is theirs, or says the wrong thing, or looks at them funny, then it's fighty, smashy, kicky, punchy all the way. <laughs> I know this will upset a lot of people, and frankly, I don't care. I'm getting so sick of religious people screwing it up for the rest of us. Please don't kill us. Seriously. As far as I'm concerned, this is the only chance we get. When we die, it's all over. There's no virgins and pearly gates waiting for us, no big beardy man saying... Right, so uh, how do you think that went, then? Um, <laughs> bit, bit mix? Uh, ooh, killed a lot of people in my name, I see. Yeah, yeah, not really what I had in mind, actually. Um, tell you what, have another go as a worm. <laughs> While we're at it, I'm sick of religious people forcing their children to define themselves by their parents' faith. A four-year-old is no more a Christian than he is a member of the Postal Workers Union. We want a fair working wage, decent working conditions, and time allotted to see the new Transformers film. Said a spokesman. <laughs> 